guys to another tutorial of how to create a game on Microsoft PowerPoint. Here I'm going to be showing you how you can use triggers and animations to on your on your on your slide to make a more structured game with you so you can make it more playable and so it looks more like a game rather than just a normal show. I'm also going to be showing you how you can create enemy shooters in the game so that the sh they will shoot the cursor and you're going to have to try to avoid it in order to advance to the next level. So I'm going to begin off by showing you how this stage here, which I've already created, that, how that works. So the, the player will begin here. So as, upon clicking on the shape, it's going to reveal the level for them. So as they go through the maze, they're going to reach this shape here. And this shape will rotate. It, it stays there. It's just the emphasis on it is for the rotation. So it's going to spin. It's going to look like this. The shapes will spin. And what this does here, it's like a tutorial telling you where you need to click. So if I click here, then it's going to remove the shape from here and bring the shape there, along with making an arrow appear here. Now, if you had seen part one for this tutorial, and the link is in on the screen above right now, if you watch the tutorial, that's going to explain to you how you can structure your level, how you can create the maze, and how you can how you can set up the game over slide and everything. So if you watch that, you'll be more familiar with this um, the theme right now this spinning animation for this I've set it on continue so how you, how you, how you could do that is if you go on animation pane which is in animations if you go there and first what you need to do is add an emphasis so I've got the spin emphasis so what I need to do now for this here is right click and timing now here as you can see here, I've done for the repeat. I've done until the end of slide. Now the shape will spin until the end of slide. You can do it as many times as you want, two times, three times, four times. I've done as as until the end of slide. And the duration, what that does is that increases the the time of your animation. How long you want the animation? Now you could make it five seconds, which is quite slow. I put it six point five seconds, which is quite slow giving the player enough time to cross the path. Now if I go on effect, I've, I have clicked on auto reverse. What, what that does is once the, once the shape here this spins, it's going to reverse the spinning cycle. So that also length, lengthens the animation along with making it more, it just, it just makes the, the, sh the animation more creative. So it's like once it spins to clockwise then it spins anti-clockwise so if we just click on ok now it's going to spin there and then it's going to spin backwards now watch how it spins backwards oh it's not spinning backwards oh yeah it's just spinning backwards now so that's what auto reverse does so i've done no intro animation introduction animation entrance animation i've only done an emphasis for this however if you do want an introduction animation for this for example I want this to appear at the start, but I want it to appear later on in the start. So let's do a, a delay of two seconds. In order, if you want the what the animation pane does here, let me just zoom in for you. What the animation pane here does, it structures all your animations in order. Now you can set delays. You can delay some animations and everything. Delay one, set the animation earlier, set some later. Now, what they will do is they will play the animation according to how you play them up. Now, since I've got my shape animation as the first one, but delayed to two seconds, and start with previous, which means I won't have to click on anything, it's just going to start, with the start as soon as I start the show. It's going to look something like this. Slideshow, set up slideshow. Now, the animation, the shape is going to appear after two seconds. See, it, it, it added a delay and did not appear straight away. Now, if I cross now, and I click on this shape, it's going to, upon clicking, it's going to add these two shape here, shapes here, the motion path. Now, I'll show you how you can create these, and I'll also show you how you can make the shapes go up and down using motion paths. The way I did, the, the method I used to create these shapes on trigger with this shape was using this trigger here. Now, how that works is, First, I added an entrance animation. The entrance animation is here, and then added an emphasis. The emphasis in this case is the motion path. 
so what I need to do now is um, go on trigger then on click off but you'll have to click on that specific shape you want to be triggered upon the other shape so in this case I want this to be triggered and I'm triggered off terminal 40 as you can see is already there so I've clicked there now it's going to it's going to create a separate animation page for that specific shape now the shape here this shape is set up here and the motion path for it is set up there so the motion path is going to start working 1.25 seconds after the fade animation for this shape now if I were to do this from scratch this is how it so this is how it would look like if I do a shape here this is the shape now I want the fade animation for it but I want this fade animation to be linked with this shape here now upon clicking there this animation this shape should appear sorry now what I need to do is trigger on click off Terminator 14 so when I click on this shape this should appear however it's at the bottom so I need to click twice but I don't want to click twice I want it to appear as soon as I click on this so you need to take it to the top or it could be at the bottom but it has to be on a zero second delay for one as soon as as soon as I, as soon as you click on the shape so then you have to do start with previous so the, what this does is upon clicking everything that start, starting with previous it starts upon the click but it works according to your delay so if I start the slideshow and if I click here the, this appeared and that appeared because I clicked on that shape and because of triggers it appeared so if I just remove this that's just showing you how triggers work now how motion paths work is you can add a motion path by going on animation and then add animation and the motion path they're here the line arc turn shapes and loops so I've just used a simple line now when you do create a motion path it gives you an insight of where the shape will end now since the shape is going to end there and I've got the motion path here I'm going to want it to go there slowly so I've done a duration of two seconds now if I go right click and timing I want this animation I want this animation to repeat until the end of slide so it allows the player to take as much time as they want but this animation will not stop working because if it does stop working there would be no way the player can access their other maze and end the level and on effect I've done auto reverse because if you know if you want the shape to return back to its original place so you have to click on auto reverse if that's not if that's not checked the place the shape will go forward then it's just going to appear from there again and go forward allowing no way for the player to go back so it has to be auto reverse so if I click OK now, that's how motion paths work. So everything else is just simple. I've showed you, I've explained to you how you could create an emphasis and how you can make it repeat and how, how triggers work and how motion paths work. This was a simple tutorial explaining how these work. Now, as I create more tutorials using this game, I will explain to you more complicated methods in which you can use these three to create a more complicated level for your game. Now I'm going to be showing you how to create an enemy, a simple enemy shooter. Now I'm going to create a normal shape. The shape is going to be here. I'm not really going to focus on the design for the enemy right now because I just I just want to show you how it's structured and how it works. So this the bullet is going to be this. I'm just going to color it red. So it looks like a bullet. What you want is for the player, the enemy to be at the front. So the bullet is not coming from above the enemy, it's coming from underneath the enemy. I'm just going to remove the outline. Now I want the bullet to be there. This is you have to place the bullet at the destination of your shooting point. So the bullet I want the bullet to go all the way to there. What I, what I want to do now is click on the bullet and just get back on the bullet. Click on the bullet and animation. Add an animation and what you want to choose now is the flying animation in the animation the flying. You need to make it come from the right since the our enemies on the right. Now if I play this, the bullet is not going to appear because the bullet is at the bottom and it's not set with anything. I'll have to bring the, let me just remove the shape. Uh, no, I don't remove that, I just need to remove the delay for it. Now here, this is for the bullet. Flying, I want it to fly from right and I'm going to set it on trigger of um, the shape since 
oh sorry, we need to trigger the, un the, the enemy first and then within the enemy we'll trigger the bullet. So I'm going to add a fly in for the enemy, flying in from the right, and I'm going to trigger that upon clicking of this shape. So I'm just going to trigger it, click of Terminator 14. Um, something's just going wrong, sorry, give me a second folks. Sorry about that guys, I was just sorting some animation out, it just it, it went wrong. So since I've, I'm going to set this on trigger, on click of Terminator 14, now the, the, uh, the flying animation for the enemy is going to be trigger 14. Now I'm going to place this here and start with previous, but I'm going to add a delay of 50, 0.50 seconds. So when I click here after 0.50 seconds, this enemy will appear from the right. And then the bullet, I'll create the animation for the bullet, but I'm going to make it appear at a high duration so the bullet goes quite slowly 0.50 seconds after the enemy appears now if I do this if I click on the trigger now the enemy is going to appear and it's going to shoot the bullet but the bullet is only going to shoot once and it's going to go and if you want the bullet to repeat if you want the enemy to keep shooting the bullet what you need to do is go on your fly animation and effect options you need to go in timing and then repeat I'm going to make this repeat five times so the bullet is shot five times. Now you can increase the or decrease the speed. That's depending on the, your difficulty of the game. Now since the bullet is going to be repeated five times, if I if I show you now, when the bullet oh sorry about that guys, I just went off the base. If when the bullet touches the cursor, it's not going to do anything because the hyperlink is not set up. I'll show you now. Nothing happened. Now, the, in order to set up a hyperlink, what you need to do is click on the specific shape. Now, if you group different shapes together, you need to click on each individual shape if you want to set a hyperlink up. And in this case, we're not setting a standard hyperlink. We're going to be going in action and mouse over. What mouse over does is basically, when any shape or whatever touches the cursor, it's going to link you to another slide or a program, but the program is a more complicated feature, so we'll just be using the slides within this show. We're going slide and the slide which is linked to this level, the game of one is in slide 11, so we're going slide 11. And now when my cursor touches this shape, it's going to take me to slide 11. Now if I show you how this works is, if I click on this shape here, as soon as the shape touches my cursor, it should take me to the game of side. That's how it works. So that's a simple enemy. Now you can place the enemy wherever you want on the screen. In my next tutorials guys, I'll be showing you how you can create enemies with bullets falling from the top of the screen at random locations so that creates a more complicated and a more advanced level but I'll be showing you in the next tutorials and this, the levels which I'll use will be from this game so you're familiar, you're familiar to the theme I'll also be showing you how you can create how you can use more complicated animations and more complicated triggers all based on one shape and also how you can how you can create some sort of like a portal so if you click on a specific shape it takes you to that slide and when you click on another shape it takes you back to a previous slide it's like two slides but linked as a one whole level that's a more complicated feature i'll be showing you that in my next tutorial guys thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe like and comment if you need any help regarding this then feel free to comment feel free to ask me i'll i'll reply thank you for watching guys